Hey guys, JC Peretz here of allstarcharts.com. Thanks for watching. Want to give a big shout out to Stock Charts for not only putting this entire year-end video together, but also including our work. I really, really appreciate that. So let's dive into the charts. So the chart that I think explains what happened this year the best has to be the rotation into small and mid caps. So let me point out what's going on here. First of all, on the y-axis on the left, we're looking at the drawdown in the first quarter. In other words, the closer down, the closer on the bottom of the chart it is, the worse it did in the first quarter, the bigger the drawdown. The higher up on the chart it is, the better it did in the first quarter. In other words, the better it held up during the selling pressure. Now, let's fast forward to September, October, November. That's what you'll see on the x-axis. So the further to the right it is on the chart, the better it did since early September. The further to the left it is on the chart, the worse it did uh, throughout September, October, November. So as you can see, the best performers in the first quarter are the ones on the upper left. Large cap growth, NASDAQ composite, Qs, those were the best performers. But you'll also notice that those have been the worst performers over the last three months. And the rotation has gone into the group you'll see in the lower left. Mid caps, micro caps, small cap stocks, right? Those are the areas that have done the best since early September. Meanwhile, those are the ones that got hit the hardest in the first quarter. Those are the ones with the biggest drawdowns. So what tells the story the most of what we're seeing throughout 2020? I don't think it's just the sector rotation, but the market capitalization rotation. And we're going to get into that now. Here we're looking at mid caps and small caps just now breaking out to new highs above the January and February highs, just now doing so while their larger cap counterparts had already been making new highs for a while now. The S&P 500 has been making new highs, the industrial average, the NASDAQ 100, of course, all making new highs. Now, going into December of 2020, the mid caps and small caps are also making new highs. And I really think this has to do with interest rates, right? As interest rates are going higher, you're getting a, a, a sympathy bid in bank stocks, right? And uh, because you're getting... Uh, in, in small caps, you have twice the weighting in small caps than you do in large caps. So I believe that that all is part of the story. Higher interest rates, right, after interest rates got slammed in the first quarter of the year. So very similar. Interest rates got slammed. Those larger caps did the best. The smalls and mids are the ones that got hit the hardest. Now we're seeing interest rates making new highs. Smalls and mids are the outperformers. And it's those large mega cap names that are the underperformers. So then when we look around the world, look at the intermarket complex, interest rates are going up. Bank stocks are getting a relative bid. Small caps are breaking out, right? Well, when we look at the U.S. 10-year yield making new highs now, copper gold ratio has already been making new highs, right? Base metals versus precious metals, as you can see here, move tick for tick with U.S. 10-year yield and have been making new highs. By the way, regional bank stocks also making new highs relative to REITs. That also looks exactly like the U.S. 10-year yield. So you've got regional banks. When the market thinks that, mar that rates are going higher, you're going to get a sympathy, sympathy bid in regional banks, particularly on a relative basis. My fundamental friends tell me that their margins increase or whatever it is. I don't really care. I know that they tend to outperform in a rising rate environment. Meanwhile, when market thinks that rates are going lower, fixed income investors that aren't able to get their yield in the bond market have to go to the stock market. So... What, what ends up happening is that you get a sympathy bid in those higher dividend paying stocks as the market thinks that rates are going lower and REITs just happen to be near the top of that list. So a ratio of regional banks to REITs looks exactly like the U.S. 10-year yield. The ratio of copper gold, more growth, more building versus a more defensive precious metal position, copper gold looks exactly like the U.S. 10-year yield. So copper and gold have already been making new highs. Regional banks versus REITs have already been making new highs. And now, coming into early December, you have the U.S. 10-year yield participating. So with stocks making new highs across the board, we really need to look at the bond market, right? People will ask, JC, is it justifiable for stocks to be doing what they're doing? Small caps and mid caps now also making new all-time highs, no longer just the large caps. Does the bond market agree with that? And my argument is yes, absolutely yes. As credit spreads continue to make new lows, you'll notice the rotation that we're getting in credit spreads as well as a uh, as, uh, <laughs> big time difference in the first quarter, credit spreads absolutely blowing out. And what have we seen since then? Credit spreads absolutely sinking with stock with the stock market making new highs 
I think it makes absolutely perfect sense to me. And then the big thing here, base metals over precious metals, that this is the chart that looks like the US 10 year yield. Look at the, when this ratio bottomed out in 2012, so did interest rates. Look at when uh, this ratio bottomed out in 2016, so did interest rates. So now that we're squeezing higher in this ratio, I think this screams higher interest rates. I think this screams further rotation into small and mid cap stocks and then further rotation out of precious metals. I think all of this is the same story into base metals, out of precious metals, into stocks, into smaller cap names, interest rates up. I think all of that is part of the same story as gold is now making 19 year relative lows compared to the NASDAQ. In fact, if you look at the gold ETF, the gold fund itself, GLD, it is worth the least amount that it's ever been worth in its history relative to the NASDAQ 100. It's never been worth less. So just think about that rotation into base metals, out of precious metals, higher interest rates, money coming out of bonds, rotation, sector rotation, and market capitalization rotation into uh, US stocks, smaller cap stocks, all of those things. And then just one last thing, you know, throughout September, October, November, everybody was talking about, oh my God, rotation out of tech, oh, rotation out of discretionary and communications. It wasn't so much rotation out of those sectors as it was rotation out of their large cap versions, because as you can see here, small cap tech have been making new highs for a couple of months, mid cap tech making new highs for a couple of months. So it was less about rotation out of tech and more uh, about rotation out of those mega cap names and into the smaller cap space. So again, JC, what is the chart of the year? What tells the story the most? I think if you're ignoring the rotation, the market capitalization rotation, I think you're doing yourself a severe disservice. So guys, this is the chart, rotation into smalls and mids, out of large, as I learned from Rafa Kampora, JC, sector rotation is the lifeblood of a bull market. And I'll add on to that, it's not just sector rotation, it's market capitalization rotation as well. We're seeing that international rotation, you could probably throw in there as well. And with a weaker dollar, we've seen that new all-time highs in things like Germany, 29-year highs in things like Japan. We're seeing rotation, not just in the market capitalization, but in sectors, international, across the board. And to me, those are classic characteristics of bull markets. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you're interested in the slide, just go ahead and email info at allstarcharts.com. Use the password small tuna. Don't forget to include the password small tuna. Email info at allstarcharts.com and we'll go ahead and send you the slides. Password small tuna. Thanks again for watching. This is JC Peretz signing off. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.